Hello. So we have just calculated the common mode gain and differential gain of a balanced and single-ended uh, output differential amplifier using MOSFET transistors. And now we can proceed with the calculation of the CMRR, the common mode rejection ratio. Uh, now remember that the CMRR uh, is a ratio uh, and it tells us how much uh, or it gives us an idea of how much the differential amplifier uh, rejects or attenuates uh, the common mode signal versus how much it amplifies the differential signal. And so just by definition, it is equal to AD over ACM. Sometimes, oftentimes, uh, it is expressed in dBs. And so in that case, it's going to be 20 times the log base 10 of AD over ACM. And normally these are taken as absolute values. All right, so we can proceed. Uh, in the case of the uh, balanced output differential amplifiers, so the CMRR balanced, if you want to say it that way, it's going to be equal to, uh, and we can look at the differential gain, the absolute value of it being GMRD, divided by zero, which was the ideal value of common mode gain, assuming we are neglecting any mismatches. And therefore, this is equal to infinity, so an ideal value of CMRR, assuming perfect matching between the two branches. In the case of the single-ended circuit number two, we have uh, one half of GM times RD for the differential gain divided by negative RD over 2R for the common mode gain. Uh, the RDs cancel out, the uh, one halves cancel out, and so we are left with uh, negative GM times R. Notice R is not RD, but rather it is the tail resistance. Uh, therefore, this is the um, uh, an important uh, result. For the CMRR of a single-ended amplifier, if we wanted to increase CMRR, there are two things that we can do. We can increase transconductance, which can be achieved by, you know, transconductance is related to uh, different things. Uh, there are different expressions for it, but it's related to the overdrive voltage, it's related to the bias current, it's related to um, the process parameters, including the aspect ratio, which, which is something we typically can play with. Uh, so those are ways of, of improving CMRR, typically at the expense of something else. There's typically some trade-off that goes with it. Or uh, another simple way of increasing the CMRR without affecting so much the bias point and other, um, other circuit performance parameters uh, will be by increasing the resistance of the tail current, the, the source connected to the tail current. Um, why or how uh, can we achieve that? Well, that's the reason why we have uh, studied different uh, current mirrors, different current mirror configurations, and looked at the output resistance of each one of them. Because whenever we are dealing with a differential amplifier, if we are trying to improve the CMRR for the amplifier, we're going to try to select a current mirror or current source with an improved value or a higher value of output resistance. Okay. So I'm going to make a note here. Let's say note increasing the R out of the tail current source leads to CMR improvement. All right. Um, Two other parameters that we will want to study uh, will be the differential input resistance, um, we will call it RID, as well as the output resistance R out. Uh, for my RID, uh, there are two ways I can approach this. Uh, one way is by redrawing my small differential circuit using the T model for my transistor. And remembering that this is RD, this was GM, the ID has uh, 
um, GM times negative VAB halves. This, this is VAB halves, and this is negative VAB halves. And then the resistors are one over VM on each side. Right? So I basically drawn, redrawn my small AC current circuit, but now I've actually gone ahead and replaced the transistor with its um, its uh, T model. Uh, and so my RID, my differential input signal, I can just calculate it by going uh, between the two input terminals from one to the other. So um, I will have one over GM in series with one over GM, or RID will be equal to two divided by GM. Um, another way of calculating it will be just from the uh, from the standard circuit that we had before, uh, the small signal equivalent circuit, but without uh, substituting the transistor, we could have applied a test source Vx, uh, calculated the current Ix, and then taken the ratio of Vx over Ix to calculate the equivalent resistance between uh, those two input nodes. And that will have given the same result, 2 over Gm. And for the output resistance, even though we have not drawn uh, the output resistors, uh, we have pretty much ignored it all out in our calculations. Uh, the output resistance in the case of the balance, so number one, will be uh, basically um, uh, Rd in parallel with little r out, and that in series with Rd in parallel with little r out. So two times Rd in parallel with little r o. And in the single-ended case, it will just be Rd in parallel with little r o. Now, one could say, you know, this is approximately equal to 2RD, and this is approximately equal to RD in most cases. But we will see that when we are using a, a an active load, as opposed to a drain resistor, the active load is going to have uh, a resistance, uh, which is comparable to little RO. If the transistor shall match, is going to be equal. And so in those cases, we will want to take into consideration little RO. Okay. Um, Perhaps something else to point out is that we have made, we have also neglected little arrow when we calculated uh, the, the gains. But if we wanted to be more precise, uh, you know, we could say, um, we could include little arrow in our calculation and ACM for the differential case will be negative RD. In parallel with little r divided by 2r, um, we can also include little r uh, The differential gain for the balance case will be negative gm rd in parallel with little r So basically, whatever you had an rd, uh, you're just going to put rd in parallel with little r out. One half of gm rd in parallel with little r um, and that is it. These are the expressions for input resistance, output resistance for both cases, as well as the uh, the CMRR. Now we should be ready to start analyzing or designing MOSFET differential amplifiers. Thank you.